All right. So once again, another day, another news uh, article. And this one today is going to be about the uh, gaming for everyone everywhere. Our view on the Xbox Blizzard acquisition as written by Phil Spencer. Um, if you don't know who Sp Phil Spencer is, he's basically the head of Xbox uh, CEO of Microsoft Gaming. So pretty much everything and anything that Microsoft does in, in its gaming division, whether it be mobile or, you know, like cloud gaming, Xbox, PC, Game Pass, you name it. Uh, Phil Spencer is like the head of all of it. Um, so this comes after some more scrutiny over the Activision Blizzard deal. Um, so after... Basically, after the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal uh, went or any scrutiny of the FCC, um, it was then or, or is now um, as of, I guess, today. This is from three hours ago. Everybody's been posting up about it. Um, that the UK offices uh, are also currently in the process of making as big as acquisition ever. Yeah, $72 billion for Activision Blizzard, Xbox edition out or Microsoft edition out. Um, but UK's uh, competition regulator, the Competition and Markets Authority, uh, is is looking into all this, and they're like, we don't know if this is a good idea for this to be happening because it is kind of you know bringing a lot of business into the uh, the Microsoft you know e e economy, I guess you could say. Um, so once again, they're trying to do damage control. That's really what this is: marketing damage control for Microsoft and Xbox. Um, so let's, let's read what this is all saying. Let's read the fine print of it. I know I'm on, I'm on a weird angle today. I'm on, I'm on this side of the screen. Um, but that's because Microsoft's website for like this thing is up here and it's making everything shift anyways. Um, so <clears throat> let's just read through this and, uh, you know, we'll do the thought train as I normally do. So game developers around the world are creating innovative and groundbreaking games. We think that we can do more to bring those experiences to the billions of players ev uh, everywhere. Our announcement, this is written by Phil Spencer too, by the way, uh, our, our announcement in January that we intend to acquire Activision Blizzard was an important milestone in our journey to do so. Since then, regulators, game developers, and players have been asking what the acquisition means for the industry and most importantly for players. Yeah, because, uh, you know, if, if Xbox is buying or Microsoft is buying Activision Blizzard, these are giant franchises that make a ton of money. And I mean a ton. Some you know a big big chunk percentage of all the cash flow in the industry is made by these series we have call of duty which is a juggernaut in the in the first person shooter market overwatch has really fallen off a lot but um there is still you know the league and everything out there's pro players and everything that, that plays it diablo has a brand new diablo game coming out or has already come out uh they have a new they have a new title in the ip anyways uh world of warcraft of course still huge as ever candy crush mobile gaming does gigantic enormous numbers i don't care for mobile gaming but it does ridiculous amounts in starcraft uh there is uh i do believe world championships for starcraft if I'm, i don't follow starcraft too much so yeah, this is a ton of money business-wise, but there's also a ton of player base between all of these two. Um, so while we love consoles, we recognize that they are not the only way that players play today. Today, the large, the largest and fastest growing segment of gaming is mobile platforms. Oh boy. To reach the billions of players where they are and no matter what device they play on, we need to embrace choice by buying up all these companies and making it Xbox branded. Okay, player choice, yep. Uh, giving players choice in how they play their games makes gaming more accessible and leads to larger, more vibrant communities of players. Sure, choice is equally important to developers. Developers benefit from having a diversity of distribution and business models for their games. Choice unlocks opportunities for innovation, enables the industry to grow. Uh, that's a big chunk about having choice. Um, so let, let's, okay. We're expanding choice in two ways through the creation of Game Pass. Uh, or we we are expanding choice in two ways through the creation of Game Pass. I think Game Pass has been around for a little while, but okay. Which gives players a subscription option and, and by bringing more games to mobile platforms, uh, including through cloud game streaming technology. God, there's so much to unpack here. Um, okay, so first of all, Game Pass. It's a great thing. 
it's a great thing if you're indie if you're smaller uh it it can definitely help you get your game made quick editors note i forgot to mention that game pass is also terrible for you know overall funding and future sales of indie games it can push it out i've talked about game pass and my thoughts on game pass and the business behind it on many videos on many different occasions um it does not work for triple a titles i don't care what anybody says it does not work for triple a titles the problem with it is I mean, maybe something like a call of duty and an overwatch if it has microtransactions something like diablo 3 which i'm pretty sure is just like more or less a um a story driven co-op experience that game will suffer on game pass because really that game is really uh predicating itself on making full you know 60 dollars, 70 dollar game sales what, whatever the price tag is on it um that full price that that players pay to, to jump into it that is the funding for you know expansion packs or even the next you know you know diablo 5 or something down the road um so game pass it really it stunts the the growth of the growth the growth of the funding for for whatever that title is now call of duty not as much but it still does because if you don't have the barrier of entry and everything goes on game pass um yeah it's it's totally just chopping off the whole 70 dollars mark that you have to pay for to jump into the game when it comes to say the pc market i'm not even talking about the xbox or the playstation i'm talking about pc market where uh a ton of people end up playing call of duty on pc nowadays i would love to say playstation is the main platform but let's be honest you know pc warzone that's kind of where everybody jumps into um or not everybody, but you know, majority of the player base is on PC Warzone. Whether it's because they can hack it, whether it's because they can, you know, use different, you know, tricks, or they use keyboard and mouse, or maybe the game runs smoother because they have a rig for it. Yeah, whichever way. Um, all right. So let's so subscription services like Game Pass make gaming more affordable and help players from all over the world find their next favorite game. The problem is more affordable for players means, you know, less funding for game developers. It just does. I, I don't, I, I've lost track of how many people try and argue that, that are like Xbox game pass fanatics. But the problem is, is the math, the numbers do not lie and games, you know, game companies do not make as much money when they, their game is on game pass. It is just fact at this point that, that the numbers don't add up to more game sales when if people play a game on game pass and they beat it they're not gonna buy it <laughs> uh game game pass empowers developers to bring more games to more players not fewer sure because it's way easier entry but the problem is again why would you why would i buy the next call of duty when i can pay like 15 bucks for game pass and if if you think about that okay so game pass is hosted by microsoft Sure, Call of Duty and Activision and Blizzard and all that stuff is owned by Microsoft. But you think Microsoft is footing the bill? Activision is still technically pr most likely going to be the publisher for this stuff. For for Call of Duty's and your, you know, all that stuff. Um, Overwatch's, Diablo's. I doubt like how Microsoft is going to fit the foot the bill. They're, they are... Microsoft is not going to give Activision extra money to try and make games when Xbox and Game Pass, like the only thing that Microsoft has lost money on in the last like year or two has been its gaming division. <laughs> um, so you think Microsoft is going to be like, okay, here's some cash. That's not how Microsoft works. If it don't make money, it don't make sense in their book. Sure, it's business. Either which way you go, this is not this is not looking good for Call of Duty or Overwatch or Diablo or Star uh, was it Starcraft or War, World of Warcraft or any of those. Uh, we intend to make Activision Blizzard's much loved library games, including Overwatch, Diablo, Call of Duty, available in Game Pass, to grow those gaming communities by delivering even more value to players. We hope to continue growing Game Pass. Not it's it's funny this right here they are trying to grow their subscription service they don't give a fuck about what games are doing it though and i've been saying this and saying this and saying this and saying this since game pass came out it's a great deal for the consumer it's a terrible deal for the developers and and really even the publishers that are on it because this is what microsoft is all about growing game pass microsoft is trying to make a buck off their gaming division any which way they can <laughs> 
uh, extending its appeal to mobile game uh, or mobile phones and any connected device. Which sure, you know, if they add mobile games into Game Pass, of, of course that's gonna you know bring in even more players for Game Pass. Uh, and really, I mean, mobile game division is a different beast altogether from console and PC markets because. Yes, console and PC markets have tried to do microtransactions, and, uh, and and they've done a lot with that to try and make uh, you know billions of dollars. Which I mean, they they make billions of dollars off of microtransactions. Yes, sure. Um, the difference in it though is mobile is so predicated on the microtransaction. You don't you, you know mobile games are most mostly all just free to play. The the most popular ones are all free to play, and then you buy stuff in in app purchases, which is the same thing somewhat of the same thing like warzone free to play you buy in-app purchases microtransactions uh but if you want the you know the story mode or if you want the regular multiplayer you got paid for that i again this could just end up being like if warzone doesn't do good like warzone 2.0 is not good which it very easily could not be good call of duty just falls in on itself because who the hell is going to pay for you know i i get it there is a lot of people out there that still like single player content in call of duty game i'm one of them i do love the story mode but are they going to if you if majority of player base is playing Warzone and free to play you know of of call of duty and they're not buying the single player and multiplayer things you think microsoft is really going to keep that around the next call of duty is just going to be online it's going to be free to play online. Here's a bunch of season pass stuff. Here's a bunch of duck skins or fucking whatever the hell else for your guns. Um, and you can run around as Snoop Dogg, you know, being like, yo, I'm gangster the whole time. That's what it's going to turn into, you know? And that is, uh, in, in all honesty, when they make the game mechanics in the single player for Call of Duty and they make adjustments to game mechanics in the single player for Call of Duty, what it does is it helps multiplayer because then they can really sharpen out all the, um, you know, that's how Call of Duty got to be in so, so big. The big campaign mode helps, you know, flush out all the stuff in the, in the combat. And then when you go into online, now you have a very fluid combat running in Call of Duty. Without that... It's just going to be, you know, little itty bitty, you know, patch updates going forward. I'm kind of wondering if Call of Duty is going to do that, though. If it's just going to be like, okay, here, because they've already kind of shifted into that. Same thing with Overwatch. Uh, I, again, I have no clue about Diablo or StarCraft or World of Warcraft or anything. I think, I think World of Warcraft does a lot of similar, same stuff too with expansion packs. Um, where that's basically what Call of Duty is going to turn into. It's going to be, a, it's going to be the same. Here's your client of Warzone 2.0. Here's expansion pack, expansion pack, expansion pack. Which they already do that with seasons, but it's going to be even more so. Buy Game Pass and you get the the. Well, they're not going to do season pass for free. You you get 10% off the season pass. Now buy it for 60 bucks. <laughs> um, yeah, bringing more games to mobile platforms, however, requires new capabilities. The expertise that the teams Activision Blizzard bring. Uh, in developing games for mobile platforms will help us understand how to create games that engage players around the world. Uh, in addition, <clears throat> we hope that players will be eager to play traditional console games from Activision Blizzard on other platforms via our cloud gaming stream technology. This promises to open up mobile gaming, creating a... Oh, for... F Smart TVs and laptops. Oh, no. So you think you have some really bad connections right now in Call of Duty, especially like Warzone and everything, where lobbies are just like stuttering all over the place and everything? Now we're going to try and add the cloud-based gaming into this. Yeah. I am so dead serious when I say Modern Warfare 2, this new, this new Call of Duty is going to be the last Call of Duty. I am so dead serious on that. Like It's going to be the last solid Call of Duty that actually has really good online and because it's made by Infinity Ward, so it should be rollback netcode. It should be, you know, everything that made the Call of Duty Modern Warfare uh, from a few years ago made that really good. Um, like the, everybody's biggest complaints on that game was just the, the the original release maps. You know, they were too vertical and people were camping, which 100% I agree. Um, but the maps that they added in afterwards were better. So hopefully they fixed that for Modern Warfare 2. If that's the biggest complaint and it's not connection sucks and the guns don't feel good and you know and matchmaking isn't working right or, and whatnot if if the biggest complaint is just the maps 
cool. They can fix that. They can just add new maps, just like they did with Modern Warfare. Um, but if you're adding cloud-based gaming into this, so you have lag latency from the cloud base from the from the cloud connecting to your whatever your smartphone with so smartphone running on 5g connection maybe even 4g connection via game pass then it's going via the cloud then we have to add in server latency and then you're connecting to other people that are on consoles and pcs and cross-platform holy shit this is looking like it's going to be a mess going forward oh no and welcome to Microsoft. Um, in doing so, we will pursue a, pr a principled path. We've heard that this deal might take franchises like Call of Duty away from places where people currently play them. It will in the future. There's no way it's not going to. That's why, as we've said before, there's a link. Oh, okay. Because they said this. Had good calls this week with Lears at Sony. I confirmed our intent to honor all existing agreements upon acquisition of Activision Blizzard and our, our desire to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. So this agreement right here, we've I've already covered this before, and yeah, um, we existing agreements. So is it, existing agreements is literally Modern Warfare Two, and if there was anything past that in the works for DLC. The next Call of Duty after Modern Warfare 2 is past this existing agreements. So therefore, they can do whatever the f they want to with it. Um, we are committed to making the same version of Call of Duty available on PlayStation on the same day the game launches elsewhere for Modern Warfare 2. After that, all, all bets are off. It's still in the fine print. Uh, uh, we will continue to enable play, enable people to play with each other across platforms and across devices on every game that already has it implemented in. This is not saying for the future. This is just saying for this. Uh, we know players benefit from this approach because we've done it uh, with Minecraft, which continues to be available on multiple platforms. Well, what about Rocket League? That was also a, a, probably even a bigger one, and that's the more competitive game. Um uh fucking man uh which continued to do expanded more mojang join my oh because yes they own mojang so of course they're gonna promote minecraft that makes more sense yes i forgot that they bought mojang and all honestly i don't play a lot of minecraft uh in 2014 also that was jeez that's getting that's wow that was a long time ago at this point anyways as we extend our gaming storefront across new platform devices and platforms we will make sure that we do so in a manner that protects the ability of developers to choose how to distribute their games what the is this a tablet no and now it's a new set of open app store principles that apply to Microsoft. So, oh, this is so they can end up running. I do believe this is something to do with the Apple store so they could keep having the, uh, the, the Xbox app on the Apple store. So, uh, they, you know, anybody running an iPad or iPhone when, when gets, um, taken out, that was, that was a whole big thing to Microsoft versus Apple for a minute. Uh, we will continue to engage with regulators with a spirit of transparency. Now, Engage with regulars, spirits, trans, yeah. So this is the UK stuff that I was talking about earlier. Uh, as they review this acquisition, we respect and welcome the hard questions that are being asked. The gaming industry today is robust and dynamic. Industry leaders, including Tencent and Sony. Oy, uh, can we just get rid of Tencent? I mean, they're just... <laughs> uh, that's a whole other separate conversation video. Uh, so they continue to expand their deep and extensive libraries of games as well as other entertainment brands and franchises, which are enjoyed by players everywhere. We believe that a thorough review will, will show that combination of Microsoft and Activision Blizzard will benefit the industry and players. <laughs> oh, boy, you better hope so, because if this... So if the UK deems it fit, they could actually just block all of Activision Blizzard game sales from the UK markets. And it would have to basically just blacklist all Activision Blizzard games from the UK if they really want to go extreme with it. That is, that's the most extreme uh, case. Um, it's either that or maybe Microsoft have, might have to pay a lot of money to maybe they could you know do some kind of thing like that but 
yeah, like I said, any which way you go about this. For all the players and game developers out there, you remain at the center of everything we do. Yeah, if you can sell, if you can help sell our game pass, uh, we will continue to listen to your feedback and do everything we can to nurture this industry we all love. Yeah, for their profit. That's nurture the industry we all love. <laughs> Again, this is the reason why I'm just like Microsoft. Every time they make a move, I'm, I'm. It's not that I'm trying to be overly critical on it. It's just like I can see the ring on the wall, especially with the blog post like this. And I have nothing against Phil Spencer. He's just doing what the rest of the board is. You know, in all honesty, Phil Spencer is a pretty cool dude. Um, he uh he has done a lot for championing for for projects and everything which i respect that tenfold um and he has also tried to bring you know like the killer instinct stuff and and all that of you know twitter you know twitter exploding with like you know the hashtag bring back ki and everything like phil spencer has actually acknowledged all that stuff so I have nothing against Phil Spencer, and this is just him doing his job. This is all just marketing to try and sell it, and also it's also to try and rest easy uh, the UK, you know, financials and all that. But um, it's the people around Phil and everybody that works, you know, the the higher ups at at Microsoft and everything that, and and also Xbox Division that are just like we have to sell Game Pass. It doesn't matter what we do, we have to sell it. I mean, we lost Crash and Spyro. Simply, simply put, we lost Crash and Spyro and Tony Hawk actually, uh, and any chance of getting Guitar Hero back or and whatnot. Um, we lost all that stuff when when this deal went through because now toys for bob and um uh oh the other one too uh basically the, all the development teams that were making crash and spyro they all got thrown into call of duty so one way or another it's just like they're just stepping on toes it, and it's all just to get game pass sales and so to me i'm just like that's not for the players that is for microsoft game pass sales is not for you or me that is that is a hundred percent for Microsoft to make as much money off from the consumer as they can, which is yes, that's business. That's what they are supposed to do. But the consumer is also supposed to get, you know, more product out of this. It, it's a two way streak, you know, like we get that money. They give us a good product. Again, most people that are, that that use Game Pass are just going to be like, okay, Game Pass gets a new a, a whole new lineup of games, sure. But you got to think about the future of this stuff too. It takes money to make games, so if if the money is not there, it is not coming in. Like I said, I have a I have a very bad feeling about the the future of all of this deal going through. Um, we've already lost we've already lost licensed games to this. Hopefully, Microsoft sells off Crash and Spyro in the future so we can actually have other development studios work on it. It sucks too because the development studios that they had working on on those IPs, like the Tony Hawk one, the, the Crash and the Spyro, all three of those, they sold almost, I th if not just as good, they might have sold even a little bit better than the last Call of Duty when they came out next to the Call of Duty because I think it was Cold War. Cold War didn't sell as much as they wanted it to. It still sold a lot, but I'm pretty sure Crash and Spyro both outsold Call of Duty Cold War. If not slightly, it was you know, or or it came even with it or something. Because um, I remember, I remember hearing Activision was like, "Whoa, whoa, these are making a lot of money." It's like, yeah, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> we all love these games, and then they just went and you know recycled the uh, development teams, and the development teams were made of fans of the originals. That's why they came out so good, and they just were like, "No, no, you guys ain't making it anymore." And then they got, and then the whole Bobby Kotick situation. Also, the higher ups at Activision Blizzard. You know, like, again, you know, the higher ups at Blizzard were not good people. Um, and there was a lot of people in Activision also that weren't good people. One hundred percent agree on on that. If 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 this deal helps the workplace situation on a lot of development teams and everything, that's a good thing. Again, I don't. I'm not just trying to dunk on Microsoft and everything. Like if they do something good out of this, cool. But I'm telling you it's there's a lot bad here anyways yeah we'll uh we'll continue to uh see what ends up happening i will i am most likely going to do a launch night on call of duty modern warfare 2 that that might be the last time i do a launch night on a call of duty game we'll see depending on you know if 
it's this this next Call of Duty is gonna be very 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 make or break for me because there is other games now. Like I'm I've been in the Fortnite thing. I've been you know, um, boy, like Fortnite has been a big one. Rainbow Six Siege is kind of really falling off with me too. It just comes down to like which game connects online, and that's a that's a major one too. Um, if Call of Duty it has a bunch of very laggy players on there because of all this cloud gaming stuff that they're trying to implement in, why should I give my time a day to even jump in on it? Um, that's that's another big part of me. That's just like, man, that's that just sucks. You know, like Battlefield imploded on itself. Um, Overwatch, I just just didn't keep my attention so much. I know a lot of people have been playing Apex um warzone it's just like i don't know i've just i experience weird stuff in warzone with like map you know like i'm trying to run and it starts skipping and, and such um which that that is a problem that's been a problem in a lot of call of duties over the years it definitely just it ends up happening every once in a while um but yeah yeah we'll uh we'll, we'll keep checking around anyways if you want to like, subscribe, or share any of the videos on the YouTube channel, that would that definitely helps out a lot. So, uh, hit the bell. You can see when the when I put up new videos. Uh, Twitch.tv backslash Warwolf. Uh, I will be very, very soon. If, uh, we will be checking out the launch night of Last of Us Part 1. Um, again, Modern Warfare 2. I got my eyes on that to do a launch night. Uh, that's going to be like a three-part launch night. First, the single player comes out, then the multiplayer comes out, then Warzone 2.0 comes out. Um, so I'll, I'll probably try and jump in on pretty much everything of that. And like I said, it will be one last hurrah of Call of Duty. Uh, I do have a video of playing World of Warcraft for the first time ever this year. Uh, I, it was actually a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for stopping by. And as always, I will see you next time.